Hi everybody, Becker here, and I'd like to welcome you to White Hat Fairy World, where if you follow the Google Terms of Service, all your dreams come true, and bullshit like facts and logic and actual results never get in our way. It's, in short, the best place on Earth. Okay, sarcastic statement aside, I had to lay that out there, but what I'm gonna be showing you how to do today is actually how to do White Hat SEO the right way. What I'm gonna be showing you how to do in this episode of Source TV is how to use White Hat SEO to rank for extremely competitive terms and get a massive edge on your competition. I'm gonna be showing you step by step how I've done this with a case study. And what I'm gonna be doing that's really, really weird since we're talking about White Hat SEO is I'm gonna show you how in this case study, everything I talk about today is factually backed up and result driven. I know it's absolutely crazy. I almost got kicked out of White Hat Fairy World for talking like this. But don't worry, you're gonna see all of it today on this episode of Source TV. Now, real quick, before we get into that, I would like to talk about White Hat SEO. More so, I, I think I'd like to just kind of rant about it. Now, White Hat SEO, in my opinion, is the most effective form of SEO there is out there. Now, the funny thing about it that makes me absolutely loathe White Hat SEOs is as extremely, extremely misunderstood. So, my problem with White Hat SEO, not so much White Hat SEO, but the perception of SEO, is what people believe it is and the people who preach White Hat SEO when they have really have no freaking clue what they're doing SEO wise. Now, I'm sure you've been on forums, I'm sure you've probably talked to a hardcore White Hat SEO and you've asked them stuff like, oh, how do you rank in Google? How do you do stuff like that? And it, it's really funny because their answers are like, create quality content or read Matt Cutt's blog. Oh my God! Or just follow the Google terms of service and everything will work out. <laughs> So what we need to do right now is we need to address the huge misinterpretation of White Hat SEO. Then I need to explain to you why the White Hat SEO you probably are thinking about doing right now has no benefit over Black Hat SEO and is in fact riskier. And then I want to explain to you what White Hat SEO really is and why it's just not anything like what people think that it is. So first off, all the time, I'll get an email or two from people saying, Alex, isn't this break Google's terms of service? You're a Black Hat SEO, unethical, going to hell, shit, shit, blah, blah, whatever, all right? So uh, besides this person being really stupid, I think it's absolutely hilarious when people go out there and they look to Matt's Cut's blog or Google or you know places that really are in Google's pocket, I'm not gonna mention them, to get their SEO information. Now, just, let's just think about this real quick. Matt Cut's job is to protect Google rank. And if Google had their way, no one would know how to rank. So look, Matt's Cut's job is not to help you find ways to backlink to rank higher in Google. They don't want you to do that. Well, they want you to use AdWords, all right? They don't care where you show up in Google as long as you show up. So look at it this way. Going to Matt Cut's blog and expecting him to show you how to rank is like going to some girl's dad and expecting him to show you how to get in her pants. That's just not how it works. Now you need to understand that Matt Cuss's job with his blog is to mitigate the massive amount of hate that gets flung at Google by helping people out. Obviously people know the rank, Google does not want them to know how to rank, but what Matt Cuss's job is, is to mitigate that and not make it completely just like Google doesn't care at all. He's not gonna be like, hey, you just need to make these type of backlinks and do this, this, and this, all right? If you look at his blog, it's like the most skeptical, like Morpheus matrix type of thing ever. So first off, never, never cite the Google Terms of Service. Never look to what Google actually says for rankings. It's not like I'm up here going conspiracy theory. It's just how they operate, and it's actually a very good business plan, all right? It's very just, nobody needs to know how to rank in their algorithm. It's their business. Now, the next thing we need to address is why Black Hat SEO and White Hat SEO really aren't that different at their understanding right now. Now, what a lot of White Hat SEOs go and do is they go out there, they try and get guest posts, they try and create manual backlinks on relevant sites. They try to go out there and create just basically backlinks manually the right way. All right, first off, there's no right way to build backlinks. If you're building backlinks for the sole term of ranking, you are breaking Google's terms of service and you are doing black hat SEO, so shut up, all right? But the next thing you gotta realize is that you'll see white hat SEOs like, oh, I made a quality site with quality content, et cetera, et cetera. What you need to know is that Google doesn't have a robot that goes and reads and says, hmm, this was an interesting article on dog feet. You should rank. That's not how it works. Then that's just the big thing. Quality content has no impact on your rankings whatsoever until you can get someone to freaking link to it. Until you make quality content and you know how to promote it, there's no benefit whatsoever. No one's linking to it. On top of that, when you're going out there creating manual backlinks and guest posting and stuff like that, you're doing something a black hat person can do with tools in 30 seconds, yet it's taking you three hours and they can do it 10 times more powerfully and get the same SEO effect 
on top of that, you are still at the same risk for triggering whatever penalties are out there. None of the penalties out there really went after people who use tools or anything like that. They went after certain anchor text profiles. So therefore, if a white hat SEO built a thousand links manually, all hard work to his quality content website, but they had the wrong anchor text, he'd get penalized. But the black hat SEO, who is building links intelligently with tools using the right anchor text, did not get penalized. So there's no benefit to keeping your site safe. There's none of that BS. All right, so let's explain how to actually use White Hat SEO. Now look, White Hat SEO isn't a link strategy. And in fact, if you are a really good White Hat SEO, you really wouldn't need SEO in the first place because what White Hat SEO comes down to is how good of a promoter you are, how good of a networker you are. Because what White Hat SEO is, is creating really kick-ass content, creating something really special, and then being able to get it out there, being able to promote it and get it all over the internet. Being able to go out there and talk to big other people in your industry, getting to go out there and getting people to link to you manually and networking your butt off, that is how you become an extremely effective SEO. Because when Google sees all those super authoritative sites that you can't get links from and sees all these big places linking to you, that's when you get that massive amount of trust. But there's no way to gain that massive amount of trust unless you are good at promoting your quality content. And that's not a link building practice. It's not something you can do at your computer just through hard work and effort. It's about being able to network. And the funny thing is those links you're going to get from all over the place, not only do they really look quality to Google, but they're going to generate a ton of traffic in the first place. So what White Hat SEO truly is, and this is going to be really weird, is a traffic generation technique. It's a way to generate traffic naturally from around the web to your website. If you can do that, you're gonna have massive signs of trust regardless of what you do. And that is when White Hat SEO kicks in. And when you're able to do that, Google's gonna rank you naturally for whatever the heck you wanna rank for. You can make pages and Google's gonna see all those trust signs coming in and all that natural traffic coming in. And that's when you're gonna start getting very dramatic, non-beatable rankings. So there you go. White Hat SEO is not a link building or SEO practice. It is a traffic generation technique at its core. All right, yeah, of course it's an SEO practice, but it's based around creating natural traffic. If you get your website on a ton of cool stuff, then it's gonna happen. All right, so picture this, a good example of White Hat SEO. Person has a taxi company. He calls up every single hotel in the area, promotes them, says, hey, we're giving discounts for X, X, Y, and Z. Would you like to link to our website? Suddenly all the hotels in the area link to his website, creating a huge natural trusting link profile to his website. That is Whitehead SEO, going out there and creating and guest posting on like taxi guest post sites or doing like your own manual backlinking. That's not, it doesn't even work. It does not even affect it. So keep that all in your mind as I get through what I'm going to talk about today. Now, rant aside, all right? What we're gonna be covering today is exactly how I've done it with SourceWave. And I'm gonna show you how I'm ranking for extremely competitive searches with little to no SEO at all. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this too, all right? So with all that being said, rant aside, hopefully we have a little bit better understanding of Whitehead SEO. We're gonna hop to my computer now, to my handy dandy little chalkboard, and uh, we're gonna do some Whitehead SEO in Fairyland. All right, I'll see you in a sec. All right, so we are in my little chalkboard slash writing a dig, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to be getting into White Hat SEO, as you can tell by the cool title with the little hat icon right here. So what I want to show you in this section is the sites you need to be using this on, how to kind of go about doing this, and kind of show you the overall goal, which is a, a effect I like to call achieving priority rankings, and then give you a few techniques and some gray hat combinations to really kill it with White Hat SEO. Now the first thing I gotta lay out there is that White Hat SEO is now the first thing I gotta lay out there is that White Hat SEO is very long term. Now the first thing I gotta lay out there before we hop into this is that White Hat SEO is very long term, but also takes a while to get going. It is not something that is going to happen even overnight or within a month's time or even in six months time. It is a very long term, extremely effective form of SEO. So with that being said, it is not good for, for example, if you have a client that needs a fast result who does not already have momentum. And what do I mean by that? All right, so say you take on a client who has a huge website, it's already getting tons and tons of traffic, they already have a lot of authority in Google. If you go in and start doing this type of whitehead SEO I'm gonna show you right now, you can get results extremely quickly. However, if you just get like a dentist client or a simple client who hops on, their site's never been 
linked to before, never had any SEO effort pointed at it. And in short, it's just kind of starting from ground zero. It is not a good way to go about doing this unless you have a very established base in the niche that you're in, which I'm gonna get into here in a second. However, if you're looking to get really fast results for your clients right now, it is not a good way to go about it. You're probably gonna end up losing more clients than you gain doing this until you have a base, which I'm gonna explain here in a sec. It's also very bad for small niche sites or someone who needs income fast. If you're looking to have your first $100 day and you're making smallish niche sites or um, not really important websites per se, you're not gonna really get off on the right foot doing this. You need to really kind of start off more in a gray hat area if you're looking to make some income fast. Uh, it's also not good for irrelevant websites. If you're making a somewhat pointless website that you don't know much about, um, you don't have a business around it, or you're not passionate about it, there's really no long-term successful way for you to have success with Whitehead SEO. Now, of course, there are contradictions to all these rules I just put out there. Don't be like, well, back in 1889, I had this one site that I'll ranked for cars. Um, you know, that's all great, but this is, this is kind of paying more to the rules itself instead of inceptions of the rules, or exceptions of the rules, inceptions of the rules, whatever. Anyways, now, with that being said, there is an extreme positive. If you're a person who has a passion site, say you really are passionate about snowboarding and you make a blog about it or some website where you sell your own sell snowboards and stuff like that, you can really, really kill it with White Hat SEO long term. If you're working for large businesses or you're a person that handles the SEO for very large companies, um, that's one thing I like to focus on. Again, it's extremely, extremely effective and it's even more effective if you're a person who takes clients and focuses on clients in a certain niche because you're able to go out there and create what I like to call kind of a white hat network of contacts and networking and et cetera, et cetera, that will always link to you that allows you to basically rank extremely quickly in certain niches. With that also being said, if your site has very cool stuff on it, you have something that really needs to be shared, um, that can be easily promoted by other people and you know shared all over the web, then again, it works extremely effectively well. So what is the overall priority of Whitehead SEO? And this is the biggest benefit to Whitehead SEO there is out there. Now, what is this benefit? This is something I like to call the priority ranking effect pulled straight out of just my head right now. So there you go. Anyways, what the priority ranking effect does, and I'll remove that so you can actually read what I wrote, is it's where your site builds enough white hat momentum and authority in Google that you rank for essentially anything. Like anytime you make a post, anytime you make a new page, whatever it is SEO optimized for, Google gives it a priority in ranking in Google right away. For example, when you go out there, if you type in anything about SEO right now, you're gonna see like search in journal, um, maybe SEO Moz show up. If you type anything about investing, you're gonna see articles from Forbes and stuff show up. Now, if you look at these actual pages going on there, I'm gonna pull one up right now. For example, we go into Google, we type in like Penguin 2.0 update, and I'm just using this as an example right now. You always will see like search engine watch showing up for SEO terms. Though, this page right here, I guarantee you doesn't have the person directly SEOing it at all. The site just has such an authority in the SEO niche that it will show up virtually instantly whenever they make a post without any real SEO um, need or anything like that. On top of that, if we go in, let's just type in, we'll type in like car reviews, all right? Or we'll type in Maserati, Gran Turismo, I don't know, let's just type in review, all right? It's a really nice car. Um, anyways, when you go in here right here, you're gonna see like the car connection right here showing up, you know, eight out of 10. It shows this review right here, even though this page itself, if you throw in a Majestic, only has about four backlinks, 28 backlinks in the past year. Um, I guarantee these backlinks are all pretty much, I'm not signed in right now, but I can guarantee the links are not created by an SEO who works at that website. It's essentially just being linked to by other people. But what really happens is this page will just show up because this website just has that overall authority. And that's the exact same thing that's going on with, with SourceWave. For example, if you just type in something like how to make, make a blog network, all right? You see SourceWave just showing up for this search right here. I've never built a single link to this, this page right here. In fact, you can see the page actually is not even SEO'd the right way. And you can just type in, you know, how to make a blog network, you know? And you can just see SourceWave, you know, popping up over and over again in different places, even though I'm not really doing any linking to this. Um, so that's a really cool thing. But the really cool thing also is once you get a lot of momentum going for your site, you can kind of start targeting more competitive terms. Like you can see SourceWave right here ranking first for SEO outsourcing. And the thing is, I really didn't do that much SEO to this. This is a really cool ranking. Um, it's a really good example because you can just see me... Um, beating tons and tons and tons and tons of SEOs, basically anybody who wants to rank for SEO outsourcing. Um, and essentially, I really didn't do that much at direct SEO to this. Now, I've done a lot of SEO for the website SourceWave, a lot of whitehead SEO, 
And because I'm able to get links and generate um, and kind of promote the site in the way I do and get links from really good sources, the site has such instant authority that I only had to build you know, one or two backlinks to this page uh, and do one single link buy and I got a huge advantage over all these guys that are doing massive, massive amounts of SEO. So that's the huge, huge, huge benefit to when you get a white hat um, bull going for you. You're just basically like an unstoppable bull and your site will just rank for anything. Now the really cool thing is as well is when you get that type of priority ranking, pages you do you never did SEO for will start ranking for all sorts of broad stuff as well. Um, you'll make pages and they'll, they'll get ranked overnight. Um, you'll rank for just broad terms. When people are typing in like weirder stuff like uh, I want to make a blog network online, just like long term stuff you can see the sites this still shows up right here like I can type in any variation of that whatever and it's just it's a broad ranking and that's where Google or I mean SourceWave gets most of its traffic I'm gonna pull up the analytics right now and you can see right here the, the what you're gonna see going on in analytics right here you can see we already get a pretty decent amount of traffic from Google mainly from the not provided source so it's just really long tail broad stuff um, sometimes Google just doesn't get it uh, the, the exact tracking right and stuff like that but you can see we just get a load of traffic and it's all extremely broad rankings just people like just digging around just doing basic SEO searches and these are searches you could never even know exist so the long-term result of whitehead SEO is you're not exactly going out there and taking out single searches I mean you can do that with whitehead SEO like I do with SEO outsourcing but the super benefit is you're also ranking for just all sorts of random stuff say you make a snowboard blog and someone types in best snowboard or like snowboarding in the Alps in May your site will show up just because you like have the broad ranking just a really good final example of that if you type in anything about guitar tabs, all right, like we'll just type in um, fruity parrot guitar tabs, all right, you will you will see the site Ultimate Guitar show up for just essentially everything. I type in like I I hate guitar tabs, all right, and you just see the site show up over and over again anytime you type in anything about guitar tabs in Google, and that's an example of really 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 strong. Uh, white hat SEO ranking right there. There's no SEO going to these pages right here yet. They're showing up and no matter what we type in Google. So let's hop back and kind of explain how to get this going. So now we're back in the slide real quick. Again, that is what we like to call priority ranking. Anything we make in Google has priority over other sites because of the site's overall authority. Now, now what we're going to essentially be doing is we're going to have our domain. And our domain right now has no authority. Therefore, I'm just going to squiggle on it. All right, it's like, bleh, no one cares. But what we're going to be doing with Whitehead SEO is we're just going to be building up the overall authority of that domain. All right, there's no real exact like when we build Whitehead SEO links, it's not like we're going to be linking the individual pages. It's not we're going to be going out there and and sending links in a very specific way like we would in Blackhead SEO. It's mainly just about turning the SEO site into just a beast of an authoritative just heavyweight type site and getting real real trust. And then after we do that, the site is just a mammoth. All right. And we're able to essentially just just blow up anything we want to rank for the site will just kind of gobble up like a giant blob. All right, so that's like blob mode. All right. Now what I want to show you is two techniques. All right, one is for if you're making a blog or kind of a passion site, kind of like a site like SourceWave. Um, of course, SourceWave is an established business. However, I use the blog to generate a ton of traffic to the business, similar to like SEO Moz does and stuff like that. On top of that, there are times when we will have a client and they don't have something of value. All right, and we have SourceWave is very, very easy to link, get links to, easy to get people to share because it has a lot of valuable content on it. That's not always the case with clients, so I'm also going to show you some techniques to get some white hat rankings, white hat authority going for clients as well. So let's talk about passion sites real quick. All right, passion, blog, etc., whatever. The best links you can possibly get, the best places you can link links from online, in my opinion, are media sources. If the media is linking to you, um, it's essentially going to drive a lot of traffic. It's going to go out there and make you just dominate, especially media in your specific niche. Uh, for example, one of the first things I did when I got SourceWave is I would go out there and I would find, you know, the authorities, all right, like the crown hat in my niche, all right, and not so much like the blogging authorities and stuff like that, those people are really hard to reach, you know, but I go out there and I found like Search Engine Journal, um, Search Engine Land, Pro Blogger, like the big kind of news media sites in our niche all right and so what I did is I made something really cool on the site I made really really cool passion based content very very cool stuff made me look like an authority made the site look good and stuff like that so what you really want to do whenever you start a passion blog you don't want to go out there and you don't want to try to generate traffic 
through White Hat SEO. That's not what you want to do right off the bat. Um, I see people who will make a blog and their strategy for getting more blog readers is Google traffic. That just doesn't really work, um, especially when you're making a blog, especially when you're making a site and has something cool on it. The best place to go out is to constantly be hitting up um, the media sources in your niche. For example, you know, Search Engine Journal, as soon as Penguin 1.0 came out, I was hitting it up with all this information about Penguin 1 saying, hey, I got this information here, here, here. So, for example, say you are you have a snowboarding site. So the first thing you want to do whenever you make a site, you want to go find all the people in the same level as you, essentially. Um, for example, when I started SourceWave, there was a thousand and one other uh, make money online blogs out there that were kind of in the same level, just looking to basically get links from anybody. So what I do is I go out there and I made friends with all these people, just simple emails, not the high level bloggers, kind of like the the C class celebrities, you would say. And you make friends with all of them, and you're able to basically exchange links. You guys do interviews with each other, you have guest posts, whatever, and you guys just all kind of jump back and forth and are sending links to each other. This creates a really nice um, sharing effect and gets your site a lot of real trust from Google really quickly. And it's just the beginning of really promoting your site. Um, on top of that, the next thing you want to do is you want to hit up all the lower tier media sites. All right, so in SEO right now, um, of course, there's the big dogs like Search Engine Land. You know, try and I couldn't. You know, I could try and get my site on SEO Moz or something like that. But then there's a lot of lower tier um, SEO media sites out there. There's there's lower tier marketing sites out there that really need content and are a lot more open to guest posts or whatever. This is the same in essentially any niche. And if you make a passion site, hopefully you're picking a passionate niche where there's a, a large base in. All right, if you're jumping into a niche that you're passionate about and there isn't a large base online, there aren't media sources for it, specific news magazines, whatever, um, might be a little bit hard to do this. But you want to hit up all the lower tier media sites and really, really try and get a guest post on these sites. It's, it's essential. Do not go out there and try and guest post on just random blogs and every other like crappy little tiny blog you can. You really want to make something cool um, and interact with the cool people in your niche and make something cool and interact with the lower tier media sites. After you've done that, after you've done that, you really just want to use the proof from the low tier. Whenever I contacted higher places like Pro Blogger or you know Search Engine Journal and stuff like that, I used the proof, aka my ability to get guest posts on other lower tier media sites, and said, "Hey, I've been featured here in guest post here. I have information on blank." And what you really want to do is pay attention to what's extremely hot in your niche, what people are talking about. I see a lot of people will message these sites and be like, "Hey, can I get a guest post?" Like, no. Why would I give you a guest post? It's, it's, there's no point. There's, there's no benefit to the site. And what you want to do is you want to pay attention to what's hot in the niche. And what I like to do, um, especially like in the SEO world, you can apply this to any niche really. But look at what's really hot in the niche and go on to other news sites that have articles that are just getting a huge amount of comments, huge amount of likes, huge amount of shares. It's usually based on what's hot in the niche. For example, when I did this, Penguin 1.0 was what everybody was talking about. So I went out, found out as much as I could about Penguin 1.0. And I contacted all these sources and said, hey, Penguin 1.0 expert, um, I have an article right here with all this stuff. Would you like maybe a guest post or some information on it? I see it going to all these other places, and these sites are getting massive kaboom and commotion based on it, and I think I can get you that same result. What I've done there is I basically pitched it in a way and said, hey, I have proof that I'm not an idiot. I've written on these lower tier media sites, and if you let me write this article, it's going to get you a ton of attention. That's, that's the benefit to it. So that's exactly how you get featured in the high tier places. Now, that's a really, really great technique because if you do this over time, you're constantly hanging up. For example, I have been emails of every single person, every search blog, every media site, whatever. Whenever I really want to go get some more white hat links, I will just start emailing all of them. You know, maybe um, twice a week. You know, on Monday and you know maybe once a week. Don't want to blow up their email, but I have. I would just go out, copy and paste the same email, of course, with a different headline and different intro. Like, hey, I liked your blank site, um, but I'll just send it all out there, and I'll constantly be mailing these people. And every now and then, when you position it like I did, you know, one, if you mail 40 times, you know, two people are going to buy back, and it gives you a chance to get a really, really good link. And I just want to build all those links. And then what I do right here is I go in and I basically have my site. And then what I want to do is I really just want to link back to the homepage from the cool, awesome site made by, you know, that kind of thing right there. And I'm not really doing it like in a ranking way. So I'm not using like anchor text or something like that, like anchor. I'll just put an AN right there. I'm just kind of doing it general stuff. I'll link back like SEO blog and stuff like that. That's what I'll link, just an overall whatever link to the site. And the main goal is to just get all these really authoritative sites linking to me and just build this really um, reputable looking link profile. And when you do that, the site just gets a ton of authority and allows you to rank very, very easily. So that's one technique if you kind of have a passion site. 
So one thing I also want to leave on top of this is going out online and placing your links in places that will generate traffic. Um, I first thing I would always do a source wave. Um, first thing I always did with College Florida, that old dating blog back in the day that I used to have, um, got really popular before I sold it, and other sites I've owned, is I'll always go to forums. I'll always be at forums. And what I do at forums is I essentially just become an active member there. All right. And what I do is I essentially place links all over the forum. Not like spammy way, but I'll like make an article and I'll have like a link in my article to my site, um, whatever. And I'll just make really valuable content for them. So what happens is traffic ends up flowing to my site too. Now because I have cool stuff on my website, people eventually just start linking to it. All right, that's how I can generate a lot of white hat links, and more importantly, white hat traffic coming to my site. There nothing shows Google that your site is really cool, like traffic flowing through it from all sorts of other natural sources. So one thing to really keep in mind when you're doing white hat SEO is don't so much focus on getting links, focus on getting links in places that will generate traffic. All right, the more traffic and and noise you can generate around your site, the higher it's going to rank, the higher authority it's going to have. And this is stuff that really creates a massive authority in Google and allows you to kind of have that priority ranking. Now let's get all that shit out of the way right here. And what I want to talk about next is how to do this kind of for clients. Now the difficulty with clients is they usually have what I like to call sales page sites. It's just basically like a little salesman on the site who's like, hey, buy my stuff. Okay? Yeah, there you go. He gets a smile. All right? So he's like, hey, buy my stuff. He's got these creepy little scissor hands. But you got your client site and it's it's a little bit harder to get them featured on places. You don't and it's really hard to generate links from other places too because you really have nothing of value or that interesting on the site. All right, and so you can also use this technique I'm about to show you on your passion sites too. But you really got to do on um, your sites is really link bait them. All right, and so there's there's two real methods to this that um, are really really essential, especially if you're a person who focuses on certain niches, which is what I always encourage people to do um, when I'm coaching business and stuff like that. Stick to just one niche. Now. Well, let's imagine the first thing you can do with this real quick, and this 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 is the most effective SEO client SEO you can do. If you can do this um, in certain niches, you will just dominate and be the go-to person. All right, and so what it involves is in any niche, there's very good resources you can have. There's there's people you can talk to. So imagine you only focus on dentist. All right, and over the span of a few months, you just bust your ass talking to other dentist websites, talking to dental publications, talking to just everything out there. All right, By pure focus on a niche, all right, this, is, this is very similar uh, to what I did for a client way back in the day um, to essentially get them very high rankings that people can't compete with. And a lot of times when you have a client, there's other client sites out there and you're going head to head with other SEO companies, it's very hard to brute force some SEO companies out of the way. They just have too big of networks, too many links going to the site. So you really need this advantage. So what I suggest anybody do, and I talked about this in our business coaching free webinar a while back, is to focus only on one niche. So what you do is you just bust your ass, say you're in the dentist niche, or whatever niche you want to jump into, and you bust your ass to get a ton of context in the dental niche. People that own dental websites, dental publications, dental journals, dental everything, any place that could have a relevant backlink. You have a list of dental directories. You basically have a large, large contact base of dental stuff. So what happens when you generate that ton of contacts? You're going out there, you're emailing people constantly, just making the contact. And what you can do, you can go out there, you know, I'll contact, you know, dental sites, say, hey, I'm a dental SEO focused agency. Um, we can give you really good beneficial links um, in exchange, et cetera. Just be talking to people constantly. Find bloggers who might blog about dental. Find the journals, the publications, contact them. Hey, we're a dental SEO agency. Um, we know a lot about marketing for dentists. Would you be down in the future maybe for a guest post? Or would you be down maybe featuring this, some of the work we're doing will give you some really cool stuff to put in your your publication or whatever. So of course not everybody's going to bite on that, but over a few months you're going to have a very good contact base to go out. So imagine this: you bring on a dental client, and within the first week you're able to turn to that white hat network, that, that big list of just friends represented by the little French fries right here. All right, so you're able to contact all your friends in the niche. All right, and the second you bring on a client, you know, you've, you contacted like five other dental places that are in different states so they don't mind swapping links, so they send the client links right there. All right, you've contacted the publications, you say, hey, we have this really cool thing that our dentist is working on, it's this groundbreaking new research or something like that, can we get links, we'll, we'll send you the article, we'll give you all the details. All right, so the, the publications link out to you. You contact like, um, you know, the networking groups for dentists and stuff like that and say, hey, we got this cool stuff going on right here. Um, we're running whatever they link to you and you just have all your friends essentially start linking to your site and so whenever you bring on a client you can just 
drastically increase their authority overnight. And so this is why this is so extremely powerful. You just get a huge contact list. Um, for example, when I was doing this for a client, we had a contact list of just bloggers who would blog in the tech industry. We literally would contact all the bloggers that were writing for any tech blog and say, hey, um, can we maybe you know give you some money uh, to maybe link to us? Can we give you some you know insights on what's going on with the, the client we have going over here? They're doing a lot of cool stuff. Would you like to check that out? And a lot of times you're going to have you know maybe a 10% response rate, but if you do that enough, you have a pretty large network of bloggers. Um, especially if you help them network with other bloggers. If you're able to go out there and say, hey, you know, we have all these other contact bloggers, we can get them linking to you, and then maybe in the future you can link to us, etc. And you just get a huge networking group going, and it's extremely, extremely powerful whitehead SEO. Um, this is this is a really essential step when you have a big client to get the edge over other SEO agencies. Another thing you really want to do when you get whitehead SEO is you really want to focus on getting links from government or extreme authorities. All right, all right. So you're like, what the hell does that mean? All right. So it's it's really difficult sometimes to get links from colleges, um, local libraries, um, maybe government sites, city sites, and stuff like that. Um, for example, if you type in the search Taxi Dallas right now, that site that's, that's ranking first for that, go check it out, throw in a Majestic, has links from the, the, da the Dallas um, Mayor's Office, the Dallas Police, or all the hotels, everything all over Dallas, DFW Airport. So what you really, really want to focus on doing with your clients is also going out there and finding just the, for lack of better words, um, relative government and college sites on your on your niche. All right. So if you go out there, let's just picture we have a home security company. All right, and we sell home security represented by a lock. All right. So that looks like an eye it meant to look like a lock, but we're just going to give them an eyebrow now too. We'll give them another eye too because I'm bored. All right. So that represents our home security company. All right. So let's say we have our home security, and what we can do out there is we can go out there and. And we can contact maybe police departments all around the nation, their websites, or local libraries that might have, you know, I don't know, a security section. Let's just use our imagination right here. Or, um, or maybe, you know, home safety, safety, you know, informational government sites. There's tons of those out there and stuff like that. And so you're able to contact maybe local libraries, police stations, whatever, and say, hey, um, on our site we have a list of ways to secure your home in this area. We also have, you know, maybe crime reports. Um, for the local, uh, I don't know, Atlanta area or something like that. You ask the police department, hey, um, would you maybe want to link out to our crime reports or something like that, et cetera. You, you find ways to link bait them. Or you could make like a list of the top 10 um, police departments or top 10, let's just say local libraries, top 10 distributors of this type of whatever. All right, so we make like a cool list, all right, for example. All right, so we have like the Atlanta PD, all right. And then we contact them like, hey, by the way, Atlanta PD, you ranked number two in our best, most effective uh, response time for our home security systems. Like your department or whatever always responds the fastest. Um, we have we have we created this list. Would you maybe want to link out to that, share it with maybe your community and stuff like that? All right, so Atlanta PD links back to your website. All right, used by my cluster F of drawings right here, and you get massive, massive authority from this. This is like a big government site. Whenever these sites link out, Google pays attention to this, and they're like, whoa. Whoa! All right, so libraries, colleges, all right. Again, very, very stuff like that. But colleges, for all the time, they have tons of blogs on their site, and they're always focused on new developments and anything. All right, so um, and this is a point where you're really going to have to go out there and kind of use your imagination to do this. All right, it's not some cookie cutter thing. This is why white hat SEO like this is difficult for a lot of people. Um, so imagine you have to find ways, you know, find colleges and stuff like that and use kind of the same approach I talked with like the police department. All right? You have, make like an a article on your client's website about, I don't know, some breakthrough and whatever they're doing in that. And if say the college has like, let's just say the college has a dental program and your dental client does something really cool or creates, I don't know, some different technique or has like a new strategy to help kids who are graduating from college get better uh, or help dentists graduating um, get more clients right away. You could say, hey, would you mind linking to this from your dental thing? I think it would really help out the kids at your, your college or whatever like that. Boom, the college links out to you. Massive, massive, massive authority. All right. So it just results in an explosion of just awesome authority like that. All right. So represented by squiggles, apparently. So that's those are two very, very effective white hat techniques when you have a client. Now, finally, one thing I want to lay out there real quick, guys, and I'm going to clear the board real quick, is the final kind of strategy real quick, all right? So when your site has this massive authority, all right, you're like, 
Awesome. All right, I'm going to represent that by like, I'm like, yeah, 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 like a happy face with a nose. All right, you're like, everything's going great. Google's like, wow, look at this guy right here. Hats off to him. But sometimes, you know, that that authority and that big site momentum isn't enough, and that's where gray hack SEO comes in. All right, so gray, you know. All right, so what I talk about all the time is blog networks and stuff like that. So an example of the gray hat kind of combination I did with SourceWave is I made the post about SEO outsourcing right here. Now, it went up in Google, you know, it, it got recognized in Google pretty quickly because it's on SourceWave, but it wasn't really, you know, close to the top page. Um, because there just weren't really any links to it, and SourceWave just doesn't have that much authority yet, but it does have authority. So what I did is I had my, my network sites right here, and then I would go out and link to it. So what happened is that combined authority from my website, plus the wow factor from Google, combined with my gray hat SEO of having my own PR websites, shot it up there. So my site, you know, even though it didn't have the most links, the SEO that was going on there was so powerful, those those backlinks I sent to it were so powerful, the link buys I sent were good, that it combined it with that big authority to allow me to just take the top search for a very, very competitive search. And so that's really an also great point I want to end with real quick. If you have a lot of good authority, white hat authority going to your site, combining it with some gray hat links um, to boost certain pages uh, for certain searches is an extremely, extremely effective technique. So with all that being said, guys, I essentially have nothing more to teach you about white hat SEO right now, so I'm going to show you a very funny picture of a man whose mustard can exploded all over him, and that's how we're going to end today's episode of Source TV. If you guys have any questions below, um, anything you want to talk about below, hit me up in the comments section and we'll get right to it. So with that being said, guys, this is Alex Becker, and I'll see you around Source Wave.